Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video here with your host, Andrew. Today, you join me for a pen perspective or pen, which is in this box. Now, if you followed my last video, this won't again come as any surprise. This is a Platinum Zumo. So without further ado, let's get on with this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what we have here is a very, very fancy looking box. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna just take everything out and I'll go over the various aspects as I take things off. We've got this absolutely beautifully textured box down here with fantastic embossing of the Platinum logo. Taking the lid off, we are then presented with a, a Paloina box with the Azumo logo beautifully rendered on the box and we also have some fantastic bows just to make it feel a little bit more special i'm unveiling the next section we are then presented with your usual accoutrements including bottles of ink the pen itself some care and warranty guides and then we have got in the box some cartridges as well and then that's the space for the converter just in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the pen out and we're gonna have a closer look. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we uh, delve into the pen itself, um, I just want to give a little bit of a brief cultural significance, um, just to give you a little bit of clarity to why this pen, okay? So the Hammer Nomatsu or Pine of the Shore is more than a mere pen. It is a cultural artifact. In Japanese culture, pine trees symbolize longevity, resilience, and steadfastness. The choice of matsu, or pine tree, um, in the pen's name, carries a deep cultural weight, representing endurance, immortality, making it a meaningful companion for those who value tradition and longevity in their writing instruments. And it's with this um, deeply rooted understanding, we will now take this pen out of its pen sleeve and have a closer look at its design. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the pen out, but before I actually talk more about uh, the pen itself, there's an interesting design element to this pen pouch. Now, if I carefully remove the pen, what you can actually partly see on the inner lining is actually there is this stitching down the center with two little apertures down at the bottom. And that really is there for storing two ink cartridges, which I think is a really genius idea. I never noticed that before. Um, uh, it wasn't until my pen actually got stuck that I noticed this. But yes, two spaces for ink cartridges. Very clever indeed. Now on to the pen in question. So this pen's design is a marvel, marrying modern aesthetics with the functional and stylized clip and traditional maquille artistry. The intricate pine tree motifs hand-painted with layers of arushi elevate the pen to a work of art. The attention to detail showcases incredibly delicate hairline strokes, demonstrating the mastery of platinum skilled artisans. Using Hira Makie, we can see renditions of pine trees beautifully executed across the body of the pen, each element spaced well and complemented with waves finished in togadashi makie in the background. There is definitely some elements of a race nature on this pen, and you can definitely feel the texture as one rubs the finger across the barrel. This adds a splendid dimension to the pen, adding a characteristic that helps tell a story through the layers of lacquer. The shape overall uh, features a quite a slender body, yet somehow commands a presence due to its size. This allows the artist to add such wonderful details to each pine tree and each branch featuring foliage with fantastic shapes and hairline branches. Now the addition of the clip also adds a practical nature that harmoniously blends with its gold elements into the pen's base. So putting pen to paper with the Hammer Nomatsu is a sublime experience with no presence of hard styles or skipping. The 18 karat gold nib glides effortlessly providing a smooth and consistent flow of ink. The weight and the balance of the pen are meticulously calibrated ensuring a comfortable grip that allows for extended writing uh, sessions without any fatigue. 
I've heard others report that this um, pen is a little bit on the drier side and yes, perhaps in comparison to a Pelican M1000 or Leonardo Memento Zero with a gold nib, it certainly is on the drier side. But never in my time of writing with this pen has it proved to be an issue. In fact, this pen is arguably uh, more versatile due to being able to write on a vaster array of papers. Now, I've also stress tested this pen to see how well this pen actually performs in terms of prolonged periods of time between writing sessions. And I'm also pleased to say that this pen, in the usual platinum affair, does actually keep going. It's not being used for four weeks now, just for that sort of trial period. And I have to say, it really is absolutely superb. So what are my overall thoughts of this fountain pen? It really is a, an, an absolutely stunning pen. It is a pen that transcends the point of a fountain pen. I mean, the, the basic point of a pen is to write. This goes and exceeds that. It, it celebrates Japanese tradition, the artistry, the craftsmanship, which goes into the various vessels which you can find in and around Japan and throughout the East. It celebrates that on a pen with such dignity. It really sort of harkens back to the, 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 the age old traditions of Makie uh, before we started seeing a lot of colors introduced. This is a black and gold fountain pen, which if you've ever been to any National Trust property, um, you may have seen these lacquered cabinets with these beautiful gold motifs featuring fantastic um, vistas of fishing villages, mountains, shores of Japan, or possibly even that of China. And that is what we see on this fountain pen. It's quite difficult to sort of comprehend what this fountain pen really truly means. It's it's a vision of beauty and functionality just all rolled into one. Now, of course, we can't forget the asking price is expensive. Um, it's incredibly expensive. And I also realized that this was pretty much a one in a lifetime opportunity to own such a writing instrument. Now, of course, if you do have the funds to be able to afford such a fountain pen, should you go out and buy it? Well, of course, that is entirely down to you. And if you've got an interest in Mackie, but if that is your interest, then yes, certainly go out and pull the trigger on this fountain pen. Now, of course, I would never recommend going out and buying something if it's outside of your means of affordability. But again, I will reiterate, so if you can afford this pen, yeah, just go out and buy it. it it's, you won't be disappointed. The, the artistry and the, the beautiful hairline strokes we see on the pen, the texture, the, the detail, the 3D transitional form of the pen and its techniques. It's an, an amalgamation of beauty and functionality. So that about brings it to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did, please do consider liking and subscribing. And if you could click the bell icon to be notified for future videos, um, please do so. I will be doing some comparison videos in the next few weeks, so please do stick around for those. Until next time, stay safe and goodbye for now.